Well, good evening. Let's talk about missions and ministry. I'm here with Pastor Eliel. Welcome, Pastor Eliel. Thank you. Nice to be here, Pastor. It's good to see you here. And uh, we want to talk just about what the church has been up to during what has been a part of three months, uh, 10 weeks now, that we've not been able to gather face to face. But we wanted to take the chance tonight to let you know that you have still been at work. And one of the big ways our church has been at work involved those two words, missions and ministry. Yes. And so let's first tackle missions. Mm. Uh, Pastor Eliel, part of your responsibility is to be that hub that kind of organizes and administrates what our church is doing on a missions front across the street and around the world. So we have a lot of missions partners that we support on a monthly basis. Yes. In addition to our biggest partner, the Southern Baptist Convention and our International Mission Board, our North American Mission Board. Yes, so have you been in contact with our missionaries over these recent weeks? Uh, yes, yes. I'm always contacting them, trying to find out what's going on during this time of the year, if they are in, in need of anything that we can need to help them. But uh, yes. So, and this is a worldwide pandemic. So have yes. you been hearing from people in different parts of the world? Oh, yeah. People uh, from all the way down to South America, to uh, Europe, North Africa, and Asia. Talk they are all being affected. some of our friends in Asia. I, I know that uh, we're not going to give a lot of specifics, yeah. but we have a couple that, that are kind of closely connected to our church. Yes, support. yes, we have a couple that are very connected to our church. Uh, we'll just say their first names, uh, Christy and Ross. And uh, they have been in South Asia, South Asia for a long time, and uh, they have to leave the country where they are because of the pandemic. And they actually went to Thailand for a while on a tourist visa. But after a while, they had to leave Thailand too because they couldn't stay there for long. So they went to a third country. They went to Malaysia and stayed there for a while and then returned to Thailand and then finally returned home where they were. So there's a couple of things that have been happening in missions in the last many months. One is some of our friends in particular parts of the world have had to leave because of per persecution. So there are a couple of countries that are not really open to Christian missionaries, and some of those have become a lot more closed in recent months prior to corona. Mm -hmm. And so we've seen, uh, even with our International Mission Board, uh, folks have to relocate because of that. And now, with corona, we've seen, I, I know with our International Mission Board, about 200 units, about 200 families that have had to relocate, some coming to the states, yeah. some going to other areas. And so we've seen that even with our other partners. That yeah, and uh, you can imagine how much the stress this causes in a family, with, uh, in their case, with a small baby and all the finances that they have to move around to go through that. So it has been a stressful time for them. But I'm glad to say that even that situation, our church was able to come up with an extra help financially than what we do monthly and help that family. So for some of you watching, you may not realize this, but our church, in addition to what we do through our general budget, we have what we call the Unified Mission Fund. And, and so we contribute to our International Mission Board, our North American Mission Board, and uh, independent missionaries that we come alongside and support. Some we have sent out from here. Mm -hmm. And we contribute to them on a monthly basis because you give of offerings above your regular tithe. And we're thankful for that. And, yes. and that's an area of our, our ministry LEL, that we, we have seen a little impact in the, in the last month or so yes. because we've not been able to do a, a missions gathering and focus that we have done in the past in the spring. Well, by God's grace, we'll come back and do that in the fall. Yes. But if people are watching that, we just want them to know we're continuing to give to, to our missionaries and not even our regular support. We're meeting their needs as, yes. as they go forward. Uh, beyond that, yes. You know, I was thinking about our time here and I thought, why don't we... Uh, why don't we call a couple of our folks? So it's late, uh, it's getting late, but I want to reach out and call my friend Miguel in France. Let's see if, oh, there he is. And hi, Miguel. Hello, hello. And you're awake. I'm going to turn you around here so that our folks can, uh, can see you. So you look right at that camera. Uh, can you see the camera, Miguel? Uh, yes, I think so. <laughs> what time is it in... Uh, in Dinan, France. It's 11.44 p.m. Oh, my. And, and I know how old you are, so you've probably been in bed for three hours. <laughs> <laughs> okay, 
this shows you how much I love Paul Parvis. Yeah, I, and I love, I love you too. And hey, tell us what has it been like with uh, COVID-19, with the coronavirus in France? near Germany and then the Paris area. We are living in the west part. Mm. But praise God, I mean, we're all, you know, there is not that many cases of coronavirus, but our staff in Paris area, they're really close to where everything happened. And then we praise God because he, he protects us. And But it's not been easy. Sometimes just because we are in connection with some of our students and and some of them they lost some of the love their loved ones mm. Mm. and it's not been easy just to get connected. Uh, you know we are thankful for social media. Uh, that that way we were able to encourage them. Uh, I would say personally, if you ask me personal, how you how we live in this, I think it's not easy sometimes because we. Uh, even though we love God, even though we trust God, we are we are scared about the unknown. Yeah, that's you know, right. And, and I will say, uh, I was talking with uh, somebody from. Uh oh. Pastor of Capital Board of the Church. And in the word we were talking about, the word quarantine. You know, quarantine means 40. The, uh, and it's interesting. You know, I was thinking today about 40 days. And, you know, after resurrection, Jesus Christ stays with his disciples to show himself 40 days. And the interesting thing is that was pretty much a quarantine <laughs> because they were hiding. And they were, they were scared. And I was thinking about that. I mean, that's us. You know, that's us that, you know, in moments like that, we need Jesus. You know, yeah. we just need to look for him. I mean, we don't have the answers. You know, we can talk a lot. We can maybe have many questions. But I will say to you, this is a special time just to trust in Jesus. Well, that's I mean, a... He's the one that conquered. Yeah, that, that's a that's a good word, and we're coming up on Pentecost Sunday. Here, uh, May thirty first will be Pentecost Sunday, and we we uh, celebrate the end to that forty day period after the resurrection. Um, Miguel, have that's you right. have you all already canceled camps for this summer? Have you made a decision? next week when the government is going to tell us if we can or if we cannot and also if we can how are we going to be able to do it you know with maybe a restriction and that's what I'm saying you know it's, it's been difficult to live in the unknown and yeah. I think everybody yeah. is, is going through that Miguel real quickly uh, our church is we were just commending our church for being faithful to continue to support our missionaries even in the midst of this time and so I, I know that you're grateful for that. How can we pray for you and yes. Debbie and your family during this time? Well, um, for us personally, uh, I think it's an adjustment e e even for our family. Uh, praise God, our family's with us. Even my son that was studying in the U.S. is with us. Mm -hmm. And we got to rethink everything. I mean, right now, uh, schooling, school is online even for my two boys, even for Sophia, and that, you know, God can give us direction, you know, and what we can do with our family and more for the school, okay? And for our ministry, I would say continue to pray for the French students. I mean, the same question that you asked, they are asking us over the social
social media. They, they said, man, I, we want to be, hopefully we can be there this summer. Hopefully the government will say yes. And the one thing that I said two weeks ago is, you know, we, because we were in Instagram live, I said, we're going to be with you this summer. Mm. I don't know how. Mm. I don't know from where, but we're definitely going to be with with the students and pray for that because they they really it's a special time and they really you know need the connection with the word of god and with people they love god well miguel we certainly are praying for you guys we love you i'm, I'm glad that you're awake and uh i wish you would have shaved <laughs> and, and cleaned up and, and gotten out of your pajamas but uh but we love you. Our church family loves you. We love Debbie more, but we love your whole family. I know that. I know and, that. And uh, I know, no. I like your hairstyle. Thank you. I'm growing. <laughs> I'm growing an afro. But uh, <laughs> hey, listen. Know that we're. Let know that we're praying for you, and that uh, we love you guys. And we're going to conclude this time in prayer in just a few minutes. But thank you for talking to us tonight. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. Love you guys. God bless. Well, Eliel, that's good. That's yeah. one of our missionaries there in France that yes. we support. Uh, just an example of the faithfulness of this church, yes. the, the ministry that's going around, and reminding that they go through the same things that, that we go through and face that's in, right. in the midst of uh, our battles. You've, you've talked with some of our other missionaries during this. Yes. Uh, I know about another missionary that we have in South, South Asia. We're going to call him J.B., uh, he and his family, they are confined on their apartment. They're not allowed to leave. Uh, and they, he was talking to me about how much that benefited his ministry because they were being able to talk to so many people because they are alone on their apartments and they're open for people to come and talk to them. And that's what they're doing. They're getting people in their apartments or they're going to other people's apartments and they're talking about Jesus to those people that in a regular situation, they will not be able to do it. So that amazes me that they're able to do they're, that. They're reaching out and making a difference, yes. doing whatever they can right where they are. Yes. And, and I, I think that's just a reminder during these days, the church never was all about being gathered. Yeah. The church exploded when the church was scattered, just as we are now. Yeah. So speaking of being scattered, let's try another call and uh, reach out to another friend. Uh, we'll see if he makes fun of my hair like Miguel did. <laughs> I'm looking here in the phone. It is kind of challenging. I'm calling Samuel Sierra yes. from uh, Honduras. And it looks like he may or may not answer. Uh, this is modern. Oh, there he is. Samuel. How you doing, Pastor Paul? I, I'm good. I'm going to I'm going to turn you around and let you face the camera so that uh, it, it kind of looks like you're sitting beside me, and I'll get you close to my microphone here so everybody can hear you. How are things in Honduras? Well, we're doing great um, as, as a family, but uh, the country is, we have been locked down since um, March the 15th, basically. So it has been uh, two months. Um, it has been uh, a little bit difficult for, for most of the people mm. over here. Uh, most of the people they they have lost their jobs and um, we have been uh, we have been praying a lot for for those people um, but uh, the number of people getting infected has been growing like like every other country so uh, so the country has been troubling but uh, trusting in the Lord and praying yeah. for the people and trying to help the people as well as, as much as possible but well, um, but yeah so well, that's that's a little bit how, how things are going over here. So we've Good. been kind of locked down. There's some places that um, completely shut down. Uh, no supermarket, nothing at all. So. Yeah. So Samuel, but, uh, you're you're one of our uh, missionary families that we support through our Unified Mission Fund. But Honduras is also one of the places uh, that we've gone, probably as much as yes. anywhere in the world. We've taken student teams to Honduras. Of course, we've done many pastor trainings in Honduras. What are you hearing from the pastors across the country in the midst of this? I know they have to be hurting. Oh, yes. Uh, you know, our, to be open here uh, completely, and, and uh, while the country is going to 
to be organizing and, and reopening the country. Um, but yeah, they're most of them. They're they're hurting, especially financially. Um, they have been some, some of them. They have been uh, kind of reinventing their 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 way of, of preaching and sharing um, because you know most of them it's kind of new, like you know doing some internet um, preaching or using <laughs> Zoom. Um, so they have been quite quite reinventing a little bit how, how to to keep on reaching. So yeah. so it has been it's been it has been quite quite a challenge. But we have been praying and, and calling them as well to make sure that they're they're doing they're doing okay and check on their needs as well. So 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 pray for this pastors as well. Yeah. Well, we love Honduras, and we know that's been a troubled country. In a lot of ways, prior to all of this, there's been unrest. Uh, how can we pray for you and your family right now? Well, pray, pray for wisdom. I think that's one of the biggest, um, you know, things that we we truly need during this time. Um, we we have been we have been praying a lot and and asking that God may guide us, um, especially. Now that uh, probably in the next few weeks the uh, country will be reopened back again, pray that, that we can be um, wise enough how to reach the people, how to do discipleship, how to, how to do all the, the training that we do through all the year. Um, pray as well for, for the staff. Uh, one of the things that we have been, we, we had to do is that we have to kind of kind of shut down a little bit of the camp, the facilities. Um, and uh, we're just waiting on, on some of the guidance that uh, the, the governor is going to give us. Uh, but uh, we have to close the office, mm. unfortunately. Mm. We had to close the office. Actually, uh, next week we're closing. We're shutting down, uh, shutting down the office uh, due because of the um, economic situation. Um, so, so pray, pray for that. Um, uh, it has been it has been a little bit hard. Just pray for. For wisdom, uh, um, pray for economic, you know, situation. That this, that this will will not, you know, affect us. We we have been we have been doing a lot of ministry, um, discipleship, with youth uh, all day long. Uh, but but pray pray for us. Yeah, well, we'll certainly do that, and we're going to do that at the end of this broadcast, uh, Samuel. But know that uh, we love you. And uh, we love your, your family and uh, look forward to seeing them again soon. But please uh, pass our love along in our, in our prayers to your staff. We, we know all of them and we're so thankful for them. And, and please, as you talk to pastors in Honduras, uh, let them know that we're praying for them as well. Yes. Thank you. We love you too, Pastor, and thank you for, for all your love and, and prayers and support for our ministry down here in Honduras. I well, appreciate that. Well, thanks, and we'll talk to you soon, okay? All right. Thank God, you. God bless. Uh, Eliel, it, it's so encouraging. I, I get emotional, actually, when I think about um, the connections that God's given us around the world. Yes. And we, uh, we, we made it as far east as uh, France but because of the time, but... But we could go a lot further than Much that. Much further than that. We're, we're not yet to the place where the sun never sets on someone that has been sent out from our church. But we've got a lot of people yeah. connected to our church uh, around the world. And, and you're making that possible. Yes. I want to mention one more thing, Elio. Last June, I, I sat in a missionary commissioning service. And uh, I was burdened. And I was burdened that we as a church set a goal and, and, and give to our International Mission Board, the largest mission sending agency in the world, yes. that, that we give to them $100,000 uh, and that we go and attend the, the following year's missionary commissioning service, which was going to be in Orlando. That service got canceled, but I just heard this week that they're going to hold an online commissioning service at about the same time, that first week mm -hmm. of June. Mm -hmm. And so we're going to get all that information out. But I, I want to remind people, we're way off of that goal because, of, of course, this virus hit in the middle of, of our planning for that. I, I think we're close to $40,000. Yes. But, man, I would love it if by 
by that first week of June, just three weeks away, if we could send them at least that first 50, if we could send them $50,000 from our church straight to the International Mission Board. Again, hundreds of missionaries have had to come off of the field. There's been new expense because many have been relocated. And uh, you can go straight to our website or to our app and make a gift to Mission 365 Challenge. And, and I'd encourage people yeah. to do that. And, and all of that will go towards supporting missionaries. Yeah, there's no administrative no. cost. 100% of that goes yeah. to, to missionaries on the field. We don't keep any of that. And we're going to send uh, that first big check uh, early June, whatever that ends up being, because I think they need it now. Yes, absolutely. Well, we've been putting the, the binoculars on and looking far away, but let's come closer to home because mm -hmm. that's where we've been doing a lot of these last few weeks. Yes. Really all of the time during uh, this pandemic, we've been ministering right here. Tell us some of what we've been doing. Well, I think uh, the amazing thing is that during this hard time, I think we have done more in three months or two months than we have done sometimes throughout the whole year. Yeah. Uh, and when we think, when you look at the numbers of what we have done, it's really, I think, I feel proud to be a member of this church. Me too. And, and honored to be able to do this. When you think that we reached to more than 5,000 5, kids, we fed more than 5,000 kids. Say that again. Look at the camera and say that again. How many kids have we impacted by giving them food over the last nine weeks? Above, more Beyond 5,000. That's children. amazing, church family. Yes. Give yourself yes. a hand. If you're watching this on Facebook or YouTube where you can put an emoji, I mean, clap hands, praise the Lord, raise your hands, whatever. Yes. That's you. Yes. You've been faithful. 5,000 kids. And, yes. But that's just some of what we've been doing. Yes. Uh, we, we have given uh, food for families. We have given them hygiene products. We have given box, individual box for children to have a snack, have food for five, seven days maybe sometimes. But we are gone to the fire stations. We are gone to hospice and give them food and give them snacks and just loving on them. And you should see the faces of those people when we show up with those things. And they, they feel like somebody remember us. This is the hands and feet of Jesus. This yes. is what our church is being. Yes. And they're on the front lines. The, the Six Mile, our ministry center there, had a, a food and a clothing yes. pantry uh, that uh, people came by. I saw pictures, I think, yesterday. People coming by and just getting the, the clothing yeah. products. So you're making a difference. That's right. And when you give, we're stewarding your resources to make a difference. When you donate items, whether it be food items that many of you have been donating, clothing to our, our clothing pantry, uh, we've been getting that out in the hands of people that need it. Yes. Uh, so, so you're making a difference. But we've got a big day coming up. Yes. Now, before I get to that first, we're partnering with our government and the Florida Baptist Convention, in that we believe we're getting several hundred cold food boxes yes. uh, that have like milk and you have maybe chicken. Beef, chicken, pork, yeah. and milk, and some dairy products. And so we're going to get that into people's hands too. Yes. Uh, and that's part of us coming alongside the government. You may have heard the president talk about it. They're really trying to get food from the farms, he calls it, uh, to the tables of those in need. So that's coming up. You'll be hearing more about that, but we've got a big day where we're kind of putting a lot of emphasis before we regather. Tell yes. us about that. Well, it's a day that we all know for a long time, or we're going to be a Be the Church project uh, event and uh, an opportunity for everybody in the church to serve our community. We're going to have several opportunities where you can join a team, you can register for, for a ministry, for a project that will be done in between two and four hours. Uh, around our community here at Six Mile of Lake Carroll, and we'll be doing many things during that May 31st, that Sunday. I love this. May 31st, which is the week before, by God's grace, our plan is to regather. That could change. We're listening to our authorities, but uh, nevertheless, it's an opportunity as this season winds down, as yes. things begin to reopen. It's an opportunity for us to say loud and clear, the church never closed. That's right. And our buildings may be empty, the chairs may be empty, but the church is present. 
So tell us some of the things we're going to be doing. Uh, we have uh, projects like going to the gas, sta gas stations and, and giving people a gift card to help them pay for their uh, f for the gasoline or to buy something to, to eat or drink in, the, in this gas station. We have a laundromat where we're going to be there paying for people's uh, laundry and uh, being at the fire station, being at the hospices, going to say thank you to people for what they are doing. We're going to be doing car wash here at church. We're going to be doing landscape and communities and homes around our, our neighborhoods. So there will be many opportunities for you to join one of those teams and do something. Yeah. So the idea is our, our buildings may be empty, but the church yes. is here. Yes. And I can't wait. That's coming up. It's, it's not even two weeks away. No. May 31st. May 31st. Again, because of this season, our, our communication is... It's got to be agile. It's got to be quick. We have to be flexible. So there's going to be ways for you to volunteer and be a part of that. If you're right here in Tampa, our Mission Hill family, all three campuses, uh, you can be involved. You can pick the activity, the ministry that best fits you and you feel like you're able to, to connect with and to accomplish. And you can even do with your family. There will be yeah. projects that you can do with your whole, whole family together can do that. When are we going to have some of those details that we can let people know we about? We should have by Thursday on our website. All those projects should be listed there on the church website and they can look it up and sign up for. And LEL has uh, office hours here on, on our central campus and so you can reach out to him. Our office is open beginning this week so our phones are being manned. You can reach out to Pastor LEL uh, mm -hmm. at our church number, 813-988-1138. If you have any questions or ideas about how you want to come alongside and help be the church. Eliel, I want to pray, but before I do that, um, just look at our church family, our friends who are watching uh, by video this evening, and what would you just say to them during this season about their involvement in missions and ministry? Well, the first thing I would say is thank you for what you're doing. You're Amen. being faithful. You're giving. You're showing up when we ask for the volunteers. They're showing up. They're being here. We have to tell people, no, we are good enough. We, you don't need to come. We have enough. So thank you for doing that, for showing how much involved you are with that. But also I want to challenge you to go one step forward to do a little bit more. We are doing great, we are doing good, you heard the numbers, but I'm challenging you to do, to do a little bit more, to go beyond that. Yeah, so, and, and specifically what he's talking about, if you wanna give uh, to missions and ministry, you do that through our Unified Missions Fund, or that special challenge, the 365 challenge, yes. the mission challenge I talked about, that will go 100% to our International Mission Board. I'm so thankful for the generosity, yes. the faithfulness of our church. Absolutely. It seems like we've, we've made it through this season, and because of your faithfulness, we didn't lay off staff. We continue to do ministry, as mm -hmm. you've heard us say this evening, more so than we have even in a normal time, and that's because of you and yes. your faithfulness. So thank you. I, I want to pray for us as we end this time, sure. Elio. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for the chance just to hear what you're up to across the street and around the world. Thank you for our friend Miguel, who uh, thank you, was a able to talk to us all the way from Dinan, France, this evening. And, Lord, uh, we just thank you that you are at work in that nation, in France. We pray that you give wisdom to him. He asked for that, for discernment as they make decisions. Yes. I pray that they would be able to hold some camps this summer. I pray that they would find creative ways to reach this, these students. And I pray for his family as they're adjusting to education and the different anxieties and fears that they face. Would you strengthen them? Yes. Lord, I thank you for the chance to, to talk to Samuel in Honduras. And Lord, this land has had so much conflict and turbulence prior to this disease. Uh, Lord, he too is just talking of the reality of, of pain and difficulty as the country shut down. And that nation of poverty... Uh, and of, as I've mentioned, of, of chaos. God, I, I pray that you would demonstrate that you are the peace giver and you're the provider. Yes, and Lord. just give people like Samuel the opportunity to be encouragers during this time. I pray that you would encourage pastors all across that country, many that yes. I've had the opportunity to meet. Encourage them during these days and meet their needs according to your riches and glory through yes. Christ Jesus. Yes. Lord, I pray for this Be the Church Day that we've got coming up. Thank you for the way our church family has given and allowed us to respond to needs already. 
But, Lord, we thank you for the opportunity to do that in the days ahead. And so, Lord, I ask that you would just work out all the details of that. Maybe even some watching uh, this video would be prompted to be a part of that special day on May 31st. Lord, we love you. You are up to good things in our midst. Thank you for letting us get in on it. And uh, we pray that you'd help us to be faithful in that way. So thank you for this, Lord. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Well, God bless you guys. I hope you have a great evening. Thanks for chatting with us tonight. We'll see you again soon, but until then, you be blessed.